Hey guys, welcome back to iCode. In our mock interview experience series, this is the third video. Before this, we had exploration round and first technical round, which focused completely on iOS. Today, in this third video, we'll see system design round. If you haven't watched the first two videos, I'll leave the links in the description. Now let's jump to our system design round. Hi Pallav, how are you? I'm good Tanya, how are you? I'm also good. So how's your day going? Yeah, the day has been good. I have been preparing for this discussion. Yeah, I can understand. So let's start then. As you are aware, this is the design round. And in next 30-40 minutes, we'll try to build a system, a component or a module of a system. We'll start with the basic requirement and then over the time, we'll add more complex features. We'll try to evolve it we'll see how can we make it more mature in terms of scalability, testability, etc. So before Got jumping it. on to our actual problem statement, can you tell me how can you execute a task after the completion of multiple asynchronous tasks? You mean that when all those async tasks are done, after that it should get executed, right? Yeah. Yeah, that can be done in, in a number of ways. We can use dispatch group for this or we can use uh, a couple of dispatch queues and, and can arrange them in a fashion so that async tasks get executed first and then the execution of our desired task. We can also use uh, async await functions. Uh, I mean, there are a number of ways for doing this. Yeah, that's right. But what do you generally prefer for these kind of scenarios? For example, we have two API calls and then third call after you got the response from the first two. So I know all of these, but I'm most comfortable with dispatch group since I have been using that for, for, a, for the longest time. Okay, so let's build one. Um, let's build a dispatch group, assuming that dispatch group doesn't exist till now and you have to build that functionality. So can we start from there? Okay, so uh, so we are building a custom dispatch group essentially. Yeah, so I need to know about your approach. How will you approach to this? Sure, um, just give me a minute. Let me think that what all dispatch group offers. Sure, take your time. Sure, so uh, this, in, in a dispatch group, we basically submit the block of the code that, that should be executed asynchronously. Um, then, then we notify when those blocks have been executed. So for that, we, we need to keep a track of pending executions. This is done using the enter and the leave function. So, so we'll need them. Also for notifying back the notify function, which will be called after the enter and leaves are balanced, we'll need that too. So notify functions should also have the provision for specifying the quality of services as happens in the risk patch group. Uh, so basically the completion will be executed on them. And it should also take dispatch work item flags for execution of that block. Mm, what else? Uh, completion block can be submitted as a closure or a dispatch work item. So, so a provision for that. Um, yeah, I think these are the basic functionalities which the custom dispatch group will, will have. Okay, but I think you're missing on an important functionality, Pallav. Mm, let me rethink. So we created a dispatch group. Uh, so an, an initializer basically, then we call the enter block for the code that needs to be dispatched, um, then leave at the necessary places. Uh, same goes for another block. So basically we'll need a group for the blocks that has been considered. Then the notify function, which, which will be called when the leaves are balanced. Also the variations of notify. Um, I think uh, that is all a dispatch group uh, offers. Okay. Uh, tell me then when do you call leave? So uh, leave is called when the async task is done. So you're saying like it was an API call, where would you call leave? In case of an API call, when I'll get the response, uh, either in the success block or in the failure, I'll call the leave function. And what if you don't get the response? Uh, there was some issue with the backend or API didn't respond. Uh, even in that case, uh, my completions will be called because the API call will time out. So, uh, I mean, even in that case, the failure will, will be called. Yeah, that's right. 
so you will wait till the time of happens is it ah uh, got it uh, the wait functionality i was yeah. missing on that so yeah i mean the user can tell that the maximum time for which the dispatch group should wait for the execution and not call the notify yep the wait wait should be there yeah right so let's discuss about the approach now so how will you build all these functionalities give me high level design first then we'll move on to the code sure uh, let me think for the modules so i'm breaking it in into the sub modules that each entity follows the single responsibility principle yeah. there will be one high level class which will serve as the public interface and basically it will orchestrate the interactions between uh, between other components we can call it a custom dispatch group then there will be component responsible for the task registration and the tracking of the number of pending tasks so it will abstract the logic of the enter and the leave uh, we can call it let's say uh, task registration manager then comes the completion handler so this will manage the registration and the execution of the completion handlers basically the ones that should be called after the notify uh, it will abstract the logic of the notify function and the handling of handlers when the tasks are completed and lastly a, a wait manager for handling the waiting of the tasks basically the implementation of the wait functions so maybe i can draw these components and uh, and can show you that how will they link with each other this should work and it's good that you broke it into different entities but i am thinking on testability since your custom dispatch group is having the concrete instances of these entities how are you going to manage the testing for this yes that would get difficult so instead of keeping the concrete objects in the custom dispatch group uh, i can mention the protocols over there and can inject them as the dependencies so then this will help in substituting them with the mock implementation uh, when when we'll write the test cases for them for example task registration manager we can make it confirm to a protocol say uh, task registration manageable okay. which would have the enter and leave functions and similarly for others sounds good let's start the implementation then sure so i'll create the protocols first uh, so that i get a clear picture of the functionalities that i'm going to implement and then i'll write the implementation for those sure so i have created this file custom dispatch group uh, for now i'll be writing all the implementation in this but i mean in an actual implementation of course it will reside in the different files the protocol will have different files for each of them but for now just for the ease so that i can see that what all entities i need to implement and the functionalities uh, i'll be writing them in the same file later on i'll segregate them i hope that's fine sure go ahead so as discussed i'll be first writing the protocols uh, so that the functions are clear to me and then i'll write the implementation for that this will be for registration of the task so basically it will wrap the functionality of uh, the enter and leave so this will help me in identifying that how many tasks are pending so that the enter and leaves can be balanced now uh, as i mentioned that the notify function should also ask for the basically it should have the provision for accepting the quality of services so that if the user wants to execute the the then the completion block on a specific queue uh, that should be possible so i'll be mentioning i mean this notify function will be having a parameter for qos as well this function won't be accessible directly by the user but i'll need it for the internal uh, implementation um, i'll i'll explain about it once i'll implement that sure 
I think, yeah, uh, I think now I can write their implementations. Okay. Uh, so for wait, is that the only method that is available? Uh, so this wait function will basically uh, wait till the time the, oh, I, I got your point. So yeah, I mean, there are two variations available for the wait function. Yeah. This one will wait till the time the execution is not done. Uh, but in case if you want to provide uh, a timeout, yeah. there's another wait function for that. I'll, I'll add it. So this, uh, this parameter will be basically a dispatch time, uh, similar to the actual dispatch group provided by the Apple. Also, it, it returns a result that whether it was a timeout or it was a success. Yeah, yeah I think uh, these are all the functionalities that I'll need in my custom dispatch group. So I think now I can start with the implementation. Yeah, go ahead. So the concrete implementation of the first protocol would be something like class, say, task registration manager which will confirm to the protocol translation manageable and with this we'll have to implement the protocol stubs uh, okay in the enter function we'll implement the pending tasks count in the leave we'll have to reduce it by one also we do have a stored property which is not initialized over here so i'll just initialize it with zero uh, okay i i just realized that uh, we'll have to inform through some way that when the enter and the leaves are balanced basically when the pending task count has reached to zero again we'll have to inform about the uh, the notify function that it should be called now so for that i should be having something else over here i'll just modify this So this should take a completion handler. So over here I can check that when the pending tasks count has reached to zero, I can call for the completion handler. So uh, this way it will it will tell that now the notify function can be called. Okay. The next is my completion hand labels for that. Also, this should have the the completion handler stored in it so and this would be a private variable and then notify function i'll just So this is how my completion handler manager will look like. Whenever the notify function will be called basically a block of code that will be passed to execute after the, the leave is called. So those will get appended to the completion handlers and uh, whenever this handle completion will be called and this will be called because uh, from, oh, from here basically the call will trigger from the leave function. So then the handlers which have been registered, they will get called. Uh, but why have you taken the completion handlers as an array? So uh, users can write multiple notify blocks uh, and all of them will get appended to this array. Uh, that's why I've taken it in, as an array. Okay. Uh, but in dispatch group, what happens when you write multiple notify blocks? Do they all get execute on completion? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I actually, I haven't tried writing multiple blocks, but uh, uh, with this implementation, I think we can execute all of them. So in the one provided by Apple, there can be only one notify block. 
so when you write the second the first one will get replaced oh uh, got it then then i think that i can change this implementation So with this, the 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 second notify block uh, passed will replace the previous one, and when the completion mm -hmm. will be called, the latest one which was assigned that will be executed. So here we can do a kind of polling implementation uh, to check that whether the pending tasks have been completed executing or not and uh, for that we can periodically check if the execution is still pending or they have been done. Okay. And how can you do that? So for that I am thinking of using the sleep function of the thread. So essentially I will uh, I'll call the sleep function and can keep the time interval uh, very small so that it checks uh, it periodically checks but very frequently this can be 0 0.1 so uh, this is kind of a, a hundred millisecond sleep yeah. and then again it will check for the pending task so till the time this condition is not satisfied it will keep on periodically checking sort of a pulling implementation uh, I don't think so that it's that efficient, uh, but let's proceed ahead and see. Sure, I'll I'll revisit this once the implementation of the the next function is done. Yeah. So here too, idea is same that till the time the pending tasks are greater than zero, we'll keep on checking. But since this is this is based on the timeout, so we'll have to check for that how much time is remaining before we actually return the result. It can be either the timeout or can be the success. So we'll have to check that, and for that I'll do the implementation for calculating the remaining time. Let me go through this implementation to recheck once. Yeah. Uh, so Pallav, could you please explain what you have done here? Sure. Since we need to return a result over here that uh, whether it was a success or the execution completed with the timeout. So I took a variable over here result, which is the dispatch timeout result and I initialized it with success. Well, this doesn't matter. I mean, it could have been timed out also. Accordingly, uh, the slight change would have been there in the implementation, but I considered it to be success. Hmm. Then for handling the weight related implementation, I have used dispatch semaphore here, uh, initialized it with zero. 
now the same logic applies here too that till the time the pending tasks are not completed uh, we'll we'll keep on waiting but here we didn't use the the sleep uh, the thread sleep which we talked earlier uh, instead this will rely on the signal by the semaphore so here first i calculated for the remaining time and if the remaining time is uh, is less than or equal to 0 basically the time has exhausted assigned timed out to the result and broke the loop so it will just return as the timed out and if that's not the case then uh, i am checking for the pending tasks count in a dispatch queue uh, the global one so that uh, the other operations are not hampered because of this and from there i am signaling the semaphore below this i am checking the wait result of the semaphore because uh, the wait function on the semaphore was called over here for the wait time so again if that's a timed out then doing the same thing assigning timed out to the result and breaking the loop otherwise since the default value of the result was a success the success will be returned uh, for the cases where the pending tasks have been done executing so i think that this should work i'm not very sure of it but uh, i'll i'll check it again uh, while while we test the functionality sure so now that i have the implementation of my wait time manager completion handler manager and the task registration manager uh, i think that i can write the the topmost layer which will be the public interface the main class which will be having all of these and users will access the functionality through that So uh, this is our final class custom dispatch group. This is having all these three dependencies which we have taken as the protocol so that we can later replace them with the mocks for the testing purpose. Uh, these are the functions which users will be able to call and similar to the dispatch group, uh, these are not taking any parameters. So it would be as easy as calling the enter, passing the, the block that needs to be uh, executed asynchronously and then the leave function once the enter and leave will be balanced the notify block will be called and this is the not notify function which users will call so they will pass the completion uh, in this and that will be then executed on the queue which has been passed mm. uh, for the wait functionality uh, we have both the variations over here one will wait till the time the tasks have been executed and the other one takes a timeout so it will wait till that uh, threshold till the time is reached otherwise uh, uh, a timeout result will be returned so in uh, either cases either it will be a success or it will be a timed out but the result will be returned and that way the execution will be done okay so with this the user will always have to pass the instances for wait manager and other dependencies for instantiating the custom dispatch group but that is not how we initialize a dispatch group so is it possible that we allow its instantiation without these parameters? Yeah, since uh, they are stored properties without values, their uh, initialization is mandatory. But what we can do is that uh, maybe we can write a convenience initializer so that we can take care of the initialization of these dependencies and user can then directly call the init with uh, just the parenthesis, that's it. Yeah. this would do hmm. so let's see this in action 
um, can you write the test cases for our custom dispatch group? Sure. So for now, I'll not replace the internal implementation uh, so that we can test the actual implementation of the task registration manager and the other entities. In case it fails, then I'll substitute them with the mocks for testing. Sure. So here I have specified uh, a timeout of 5 seconds and we are expecting that uh, we'll get the result as success. So okay. this way I'm trying to test the weight functionality. I just run the, the, the test cases. Yeah. My bad, I think. The final impressive option value test with timeout pass. So it seems like the test case has passed, but I think something was missed. I think uh, I'll I'll check that. But uh, yeah, the test case is passed. Should I check that? Uh, what what broke? No, that's fine. Uh, you can check it later. Sure. Uh, since all test cases are passed and overall it looks good to me uh, but I have some questions in term of scalability and performance sure so what are the potential performance bottlenecks you see in this code so I feel that uh, there there might be some limitations related to concurrency uh, the code I wrote it uh, it runs all tasks in one single global dispatch queue so if we have many tasks running concurrently, this could probably lead to contention and uh, potentially affect performance. Hmm. That's very good point. And uh, what can you do about that? So maybe considering multiple queues or custom concurrent queues for better parallelism, uh, it can help. Yeah, that can do. And do you see any problem with waiting mechanism, uh, the wait function without timeout? Um, not, not exactly. Actually, earlier I was just going to use the while loop to block the, the implementation and achieve waiting that way. But then I thought of improving it by putting a thread to sleep for a short duration. Okay, but it still uses the busy wait loop to check for pending task count. This loop consumes CPU resources while waiting, which can be inefficient, especially if pending task count doesn't change frequently. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that, that can be improved. So, uh, cool, Palla. I think we are pretty much done here. So, do you have any questions for me? Yeah, just wanted to know about the implementation we did. Um, based on that, do you have any suggestions for me? I mean, the areas where I should focus more? Um, not much. Like, a couple of things were here and there. But more or less, the functionality is working fine. Maybe you should have thought a little more about the scalability aspect. Uh, a little more on concurrency related situations but again i understand that is not possible in 30 40 minutes yeah. so nothing much sure thanks tanya uh, it was an interesting problem to solve and and for my own curiosity i'll see that uh, how's the actual implementation of dispatch group and uh, where it crashed uh, i'll have to check that sure you must do that so that's it for now we'll get back to you
Thank you. So that was about the system design round. I hope that you liked it. If this gets through, the next round will be hiring manager round. Please stay tuned. And if you like the content of this channel, you can consider hitting that like button and the subscribe button. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.